Good morning, conference, and thank you, Chair. I hope everyone had a great evening last night. We know that together we are stronger, that we can and must work together for a sustainable Scotland, for our urban, rural, and coastal communities, for our workers, and for future generations. Ban Ki-moon said recently that this generation is the first in humanity's history with the capacity to end endemic poverty and the last with the chance to halt catastrophic climate change. In the winter of 2015, I traveled to Paris to witness the Global Climate Agreement, assembling with thousands from across the world to stand for climate justice. It is certain that we must tackle climate change and the delusions and denials of President Trump can only make us even more determined in this quest. 2016 was the hottest year on record. There have been an estimated 140 million displaced climate change refugees since 2008, and the UN says the number could reach 300 million by 2050. As internationalists, we fight for a sustainable world Socialism has always embraced environmentalism. We in the labor movement are the first to recognize that the workers and the poor are those who are affected most by the effects of climate change and the pollution of our water, our air, and the earth. It is they who stand to lose their jobs, their land, their food, and their shelter when natural resources deplete across the world. Affiliated to our party, the Socialist Environment Resources Association, Sarah, has worked tirelessly with a focus on engineering and effective labor engagement with the environment. Fighting for a sustainable society and low carbon economy for a just transition is a revolutionary shift which has justice for workers and communities right at its heart. Last year, I traveled to Brussels to contribute to a just transition conference. There were representatives from across Europe together trying to break through uncertainty and any fear of change to bring the certainty of a carefully planned, structured way forward across all sectors. This year, here in Scotland, a, a, a joint statement on just transition has been issued by the Friends of the Earth Scotland, the uh, Scottish Trade Union Congress, and many unions and NGOs working together to forge a fair future strategy. It starts like this. It's time for a just transition in Scotland, moving to a modern, low-carbon economy in a way which protects workers' livelihoods, creates a new industrial base, and which delivers a fairer Scotland. The need for action is urgent in order to avert the environmental and economic costs of climate change and to rebalance the economy to one that provides enough decent jobs making things in a clean way. This, of course, demands a sharp focus on education strategy for initial training and for transferable skills already developing in Dumfries College, Borders College in my region and elsewhere across Scotland. And industry must play its part. And government support is essential. We don't hear enough from the SNP on this. Ask all those here today, whoever you are representing, your CLP or union, socialist society or NGO, to contribute to our Just Transition paper. This is our people's lives we are talking about. Communities matter to us. Before becoming an MSP, I was a, a community activist and community councillor in Rigside near the long closed down Pomfrey Colliery. We fought against inappropriate open cast mines. We tried to get better regulation for the industry, but it was never enough to protect the affected communities across the coal belt from the impacts. Now we are facing the challenge of onshore fracking across Scotland. At Holyrood, we are working on my member's bill for a legal ban for our health our communities, our jobs, and our planet. The SNP chooses to sit on the fracking fence, leaving communities and voters in deep uncertainty. While they couch their arguments in technicalities to disguise the fact that they don't want to make a decision, we have been perfectly clear. No ifs, no buts, no fracking. And my bill will ban fracking from our shores. Instead of looking for new sources of fossil fuel, we should be focusing on more new, clean, unionized jobs, and I stress the word unionized, in renewables and for fair pay. Scottish Labour is the only party calling for a renewables jobs target. 
conference, the city of Drammen lies 40 miles west of Oslo. Winter temperatures there can dip as low as 20 degrees. A Glasgow company, Star Renewables, built the city's renewables district heat system. It could be effective here in Scotland if our Scottish government had the energy and drive to commit to radical change in policy to tackle fuel poverty and climate change. To achieve all this, it is certain that we as a party must fight for continued funding in research and development across Europe, coupled with robust environmental standards at home after Brexit. We want to drive renewables technology forward from research and development to commercialization. Recently with Ian Gray, I visited SunAmp in East Lothian, which makes heat storage systems being installed by housing associations. Future uh, manufacturing opportunities like SunAmp must not be missed. We are all pushing also for a circular economy and a reduction in waste. The SNP government is now lagging behind even Coca-Cola Industries in its approach to waste. Surely now even big business are in favor. The SNP must stop prevaricating and finally act to initi initiate a deposit return scheme tailored to Scottish circumstances. This will keep plastic in the supply chain rather than in our seas, bringing new jobs and more cash for our councils. While the SNP pays lip service and chases headlines on protecting our habitats and the iconic flora and fauna which live in them, Scotland's quality of biodiversity is now the fifth lowest in Europe. Conference Scottish Labour will really continue to push the Scottish Government to do better on this. Respect for our planet is entwined with the roots of our beliefs as far back as our movement goes. Engels said, we, are by no, we by no means rule over nature like a conqueror over a foreign people, like someone standing outside nature. With flesh, blood, brain, we belong to nature, exist in its midst, and all our mastery of it consists in the fact that we are able to learn its laws and apply them correctly. I was delighted that one of our sustainability stalwarts and my very good friend Sarah Boyack won the RSPB's Environment Politician of the Year this year. And I want to recognize also the Environment NGOs and all their volunteers for the significant contribution you make to sustainable development. Conference, if we are to have a sustainable Scotland, the distribution of land ownership must continue to change radically. Scotland has led on land reform, whatever the Greens say, whether for community buildings, woodlands, harbours, community land for growing. David Stewart and I invite you all to contribute to that challenge paper. And marine and coastal communities also need labour support. We must ensure that for all marine activity, be it inshore fisheries, aquaculture or marine energy, our approach brings sustainable employment now and for the future and protects and enhances our marine environment in consultation with all those with an interest. We must also plan urban environments for the future where people can live well and get around easily, breathing clean air. The SNP failed to act quickly enough on this major health issue. We're still waiting for them to make their first proposed emission zones a reality. The Scotland's towns, some of the most chokingly congested in the UK, when even Creef sits on the list of highest polluted streets in Scotland. One emission zone by 2018 is simply too little, too late. Let's bear this in mind when we are campaigning in our local elections. Cooperative councils also have a resonance for our future. This is a dynamic and inclusive way of working involving our communities. The Edinburgh Solar Co-op has helped tackle the shame of fuel poverty with solar panels on schools, and the profits being put back into the Community Benefit Fund. And Pauline McNeill will speak more about how we can ensure that our housing is warm, plentiful and sustainable. Finally, let's be optimistic and plan sustainable pensions. Pension divestment is an opportunity to influence Scotland's future by investing in what matters to us for a sustainable Scotland. Conference. It's been a busy year since Kezia first appointed me as our spokesperson on environmental affairs, and I've loved almost every minute of it. It only gets busier. This term alone, there will be climate change, circular economy, good food nation, inshore fisheries, and warm homes bills. Every one of these pieces of legislation represents an opportunity for us in the labor movement to hold the SNP government to account. 
While they talk and talk, we will work hard. We will work with unions, NGOs, and our communities and councils to ensure that the labour movement values are woven into Scotland's precious environmental heritage. Because we don't have any more time to talk. If we want a just Scotland, if we want a green Scotland, if we want a sustainable Scotland, we must act now. Thank you.